this video I'm going to be using the new Makeup Revolution palette and it's the Soph palette and it's the Extra Spice one. So this was released a couple of weeks ago I believe, it cost £10 and I think I paid something like £1.50 or £2 postage and packaging, came just under £12 anyway and I received this a couple of days ago. So I'm going to a wedding party, so I did the bride's makeup and hair and the bride's mother's makeup and hair this morning. So I managed to watch them get married which is lovely and then I've come home and now I'm getting ready to go to the evening do. So as you can see I've done my makeup but I haven't done my hair yet. I'm not too sure what I've got to do. I've got half an hour. <laughs> Before I've got to go so I thought well because it's the first time I've properly used this palette I have used it once or twice just messing around but not really creating a look with it didn't like what I created actually didn't like the actual colors I chose but I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on but I wanted to do a video to show you a makeup tutorial but using this palette and then I wanted to give it a little bit of a review as well. So if you're interested to see how I created this look and what colours I used and the full face really, I've got full face foundation, concealer, the lot, then carry on watching. I will just go now through the swatches telling you exactly what each colour is called and what they look like on my arm. So... I hope you enjoy this video. The first one is a, I'd say it's like a rose gold shimmery shade. You can't really see it much. It is very, very subtle, but you can sort of see a bit of a shimmer there. The next one is called Running Late. And this is like a coppery matte color. Looks in there. We've got Infinity, which is gorgeous. It is a silver shimmery metallic whoa that really stands out that is really cool we've got cheesecake which is a matte brown shade it's more like a ready brown and then we've got cookie dough which is a matte pale brown shade then the last at the top is called dreams and this is a really lovely shimmery copper beautiful beautiful copper you can see there next going down here we've got vitamin c which is a matte yellow moving up my arm <laughs> then we've got sweet and sour which is a matte orange then we've got 21 which is a matte vibrant pinky red tone and then and then we've got Romance, which is, a, which is a shimmery purple. Oh, that looks beautiful on there. I think that must be my favorite color. And then we're moving along. We've got Enchanted, which is a matte purple. And then the last one on here is a matte dark brown. And there. So last line. We got a really dark matte brown called brownies. Excuse my bruise, I had a blood test. <laughs> Moving along, we've got chocolate orange, which is a matte, as it suggests really, it is like a chocolatey orange color, that's really nice. Then we've got mulled wine, which is like a pinky matte color. Then one of my favorites it is LA Sun, which you can see, gorgeous, gorgeous yellow shimmery then we've got aurora which is a shimmery green <laughs> moving up my arm slowly and then the last color is reputation which is a matte sort of it's not black i'd say it's more like a greeny black so those are all the colors there's 19 in all the colors look absolutely gorgeous swatched the shimmers are my favorites by far so yeah and they're really really nice colors but let's see what my thoughts are when i apply them to my eyes so i've just put my skincare on i've put my spray put moisturizer serum and i just grabbed this smashbox primer 
and I've just put that on my face. So I'm all primed and ready to go. So the foundation that I'm going to be wearing is L'Oreal Infallible Pro, Pro, Pro Glow. And I've got two of them. I've got another one. This one is one I tested out a few weeks ago and I absolutely fell in love with it. But it's a little bit too pale for this time of year. So I've gone for a couple of shades darker. So the original one is 202, which is actually my colour. But 206 is a little bit darker. So because I'm not really tanned at the moment, I'm going to mix a tiny bit of this in with this one but if you want to see the review that I did for this foundation I'll pop that down below so you can take a look at that so just using Indanchi beauty blending sponge that I dampened down earlier on I'm just going to apply foundation to my face right underneath my eyes I'm using Tarte shape tape and this is in shade fair neutral just dotting it <laughs> looking gorgeous <laughs> and just going over my sponge blending that all in and on my eyelids there <laughs> looks quite pale there you can see me a bit clearer now I'm just tapping that into my skin <laughs> There. so that's my base sort of sorted at the minute I'm going to be doing the rest of like my powders and everything like that right at the end so just using a Rimmel translucent powder and I don't know what brush I've got here <laughs> just any old soft brush I'm just going to set my eye area and I'll just do that just for now the reason I set mainly my eyebrows more than anything and my eye area to be honest because the concealer and the foundation act as a primer but also because as you can see I've got hardly any eyebrows so if I don't set them and it, I just leave the foundation on them as they are then it'll be too greasy to put any eyebrow products on so I'm just not adding any more powder just going over my pores which always look a little bit better with a bit of powder on top <laughs> so I'll just leave my skin like that for now so next is my brows I've got Precisely My Brow by Benefit and Goof Proof by Benefit both in shade 3 so my routine is going in with a Goof Proof and creating a shape so very lightly because I don't like a fake looking eyebrow I like it to look quite natural so I am going outside the actual line of my brows but only just there so you can see that it's filled in quite a bit and it looks different it looks more shaped <laughs> next using a spoolie on the end of the precisely my brow i brush it all in and this just softens it i brush up and across and if I think that that's filled in okay, which I think it is, I go in with the other end of the Precisely My Brow. It's a lot smaller nib. And then I generally just fill in little gaps, really, and create a stronger underbrow. Then using Lip Coat, it's an eyebrow gel. It's just a clear eyebrow gel. I brush up and push over and down so I push right up right up there to lift my eyebrows and what this does it cre it helps create a thicker looking eyebrow as well so I leave that for the time being and then I might go in with precisely my brow and fill in a little bit more in the corners there I just wait until it all dries so I'm just going to do the other eyebrow right so next is the actual eyeshadow now because the sofa palette doesn't have a very neutral beige matte type color which I like to cover all my eye, all my eye area in I'm going to use the one from my Urban Decay Naked Heat Petite and this is called is it called yeah it's called Inhale so it's that one there on the corner so I'm just applying this all over my lid and up underneath everywhere and that will act as another base then still haven't decided yet what colour from the palette or what colours from the palette I want to do so I've got ginger hair and I'm wearing burgundy so should I just go for like a burgundy colour or should I stay safe and go with all the coppers and 
the goals and stuff, I don't know. Maybe a pink eye would be quite cool. <laughs> Clash of my hair, I don't know. I woke up this morning at about quarter to six. I left my house at half six to travel to the venue where the wedding is being held. And I started doing the bride's hair and makeup about half seven. And then I did her mum's hair and makeup as well. So, and then I got asked then to stay, which is lovely. Not looking the best, hardly any makeup on. Hair scraped back, wearing a really dirty dress full of makeup stains and hairspray and God knows what. But uh, yeah, so they asked me to stay, which is lovely. So I sneaked in around the back and they got, they got um, married in a, like an old cow shed. That's the name of it. And oh, it's beautiful. It is so pretty. But yeah, so I snuck around the back and went in there. So I was there in the corner looking completely scruffy compared to everyone else but I saw him get married and then I snuck out then so yeah so I'm excited for tonight I really am so the colours the colours see the easier colours the easier colours to do are these now this palette is very much love hate for me I have tried a few colours and I haven't been impressed. I wanted to try look with the dark colours and I just found it so difficult. I should have filmed it and if it is something you'd like me to film, please let me know. But I tried using that colour, tried using that colour, tried using that colour wet as well. Not great, not great at all. Um, yeah, not great. But I have tried using these coppery shades that one, where's the next one? Not that one as such, but is it that one up there or there? I can't see now. And they are gorgeous, really, really lovely. But I've yet to try the pinks and stuff. So I think I'm going to go in. My dilemma is I love that pink, but the colours that I can transition it into are all shimmers and I don't want to have a big lid full of that colour. Oh, what should I do? What should I do? Right, okay. I'm going to go in with this one. This one is Mulled Wine. I'm going to go in with this one here. I'm going to go in lightly. <laughs> Still not sure exactly what I'm going to do with my eyes. But we'll have a go. Using a Zoeva 228 brush. If you've seen any of my other makeup videos before, you'll know I'm obsessed. I've got about three of them. I absolutely love them. The reason I love them is because they're fluffy, but they go into a point, which means that you can really do some great detailed work and blending, which is the really important part. So, right, okay. I'm going to do my basic filling in the crease sort of shade. So I wouldn't normally go in with such a bright colour straight away, but the palette isn't giving me too much um, choice. So hopefully you can see there. Right then. So keeping my eyes open, I can see exactly where I want to place the colour here. My eyes are slightly drooping. They're not, they're not hooded, but they are slightly drooping the older I'm getting. And the droop is here, as you can see. Woo! So, I don't want to follow that line. You don't follow that line there, <laughs> if you want, because it will accentuate the droop, the droop. So I want to follow that line to start off with, but then I'll be bringing it up a bit. The very, 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 very light circular motions, concentrating in little areas at a time. But I want to cover a lot of this area, not fussed about the middle here. Still not sure what I'm going to do. So I want to bring that up a little bit now. So when I look at that now, I can see the colour clearly, but I need to bring that up higher. Because if you've got droopy lids or hooded lids, you need to bring a strong colour up quite high, especially if you've got quite a large lid area like what I've got. I'm sort of shape, using the very side of this brush, I'm not going in, using the side, I'm applying the colour but I'm more like blending it upwards, so I had the colour on the nib there but I'm actually using it on the side and just blending it upwards and this just helps with the blending into the, the Urban Decay colour, so then just slightly blending it out here as well. That's one eye done, so I'm just going to do the other eye. There, so it's got a good colour on that eyelid. So I'm going to go in with a darker colour, which is called the Enchanted, which is that one there, using the same brush. I'm just going to concentrate more now in this middle area here. 
where my fold is, where my droop is, I'm concentrating there. So if I could draw a, like a circle, it would be just there. That's where I'm really concentrating with the colour. So these colours are going on alright. Not as creamy as I'd like, but okay. From what I've tried so far of this palette, I much prefer my other Makeup Revolution. It's called the Flawless Four Palette. Now I love that. Oh, it's one of my top palettes. I absolutely love it. Well, I don't know how the formulas can change, you know, but I suppose they, they do, don't they? But then I've had other Makeup Revolution palettes, not, you know, just basic ones, and I find them useless. I don't like them at all. I've got a very love-hate relationship with Makeup Revolution. <laughs> Some products I really like. That's some of their eyeliners and concealer. I've liked the, the concealer and that flawless four palette. Four, not floor. <laughs> I need to blend it all in. I can always add a darker touch afterwards. I'm going to go in with a shimmery shade and then I'm going to add a bit of pink afterwards. So I'm going to go in there. It's called Everyday. It's that one. Gorgeous, gorgeous shimmery colour. I've changed my brush and it's now a 234 Zoeva brush. It's more flat. So I'm just going to put this on my bottom lid just like that. I'm not going to do like a halo as such. It's just something to brighten up that eye area. If you've got a really good eyeshadow, you can really tell the quality by how it's able to blend and how flawlessly it's able to blend. Obviously, you know, you just don't do a quick blend and that's it. You have to get, to get a really flawless makeup look, an eye makeup look. You could blend and blend and blend and blend until you can't blend no more. But generally, I have, I mean, obviously you won't see me blend in the full amount of time or else this video will last forever, but I do blend quite a lot, but when I'm here now looking, you might be able to see lines, creases, and that's where the eyeshadow is sort of, it hasn't blended in that well. It is a little bit, but not really. I'm not sure if you can be, I can see in the mirror here. Can you see little lines, little creases? It just means that I need to blend again. So there, so I've just lightened that up a bit there. Going in with Zoeva, and this is a detail shader in 237. I'm using that hot pink colour, and it's called 21. So I'm just going to place this actually just in the middle there. I'm tapping this on in like a little circle. I'm just holding it up there. So it's not really like a spotlight not even a like a crease or nothing it's just something to add a little bit of color a bit of difference and i'll be blending it all in together i am making this up as i go along <laughs> no plan no plan except for the sort of colors now this is applying nice actually this is the first color that i actually like maybe it's because i am placing it as opposed to blending it in and covering a larger area but yeah, no, it's quite nice. So using just a clean uh, fluffy brush, I'm going to go in and get rid of those little creases and very, very lightly blend the work that I've done so far. So here, I don't want it, I don't want to blend it so hard that it all smudges into one. I want it to be able to see that there is different colors on my lid. So it's just going in with the edges really. I can always add a little bit of colour extra afterwards. There, can you see the difference between that one and that one now? <laughs> You're just a little bit softer, isn't it? This one's a bit harsh. So just trying to get rid of these lines. Right, I want a darker colour, but I don't want to use that really dark one. So I'm going to go back in with the Enchanted. I've now got a pencil brush and it is a 230, Zoeva 230, a, a little pencil brush, I love it. So I'm just darkening up the outer corners. I thought maybe that every day, that very vibrant, that very bright colour might look quite nice either side, but it's non-existent, it just blends into nothing. But I am going to wet my brush and try and see if I can 
use it to highlight the inner corners a bit more. So I'm just placing, I'm just darkening up this corner in like a shape of a V. Just darkening it up a little bit. I don't want the middles to be any brighter because I think it will just ruin the look a bit. So I leave that for now. So I'm just wetting a brush. I'm going in with that everyday colour, which is there. Yeah, it does stand out a little bit more, which is good. I, I like it and the colour's quite pretty. Just blend that with my finger. Bringing it down a little bit underneath my eye for when I do the rest of my eye, it will all blend together. Right. <laughs> Going back with the first brush I used, which is 228. I'm not applying any more colour. I think on here is Enchanted and Mulled Wine. I'm just going to run it underneath my eyes. I want just a little bit of a shade. And that's why this brush is perfect for that, because the point comes in handy. Because if you didn't have a point, well, you'd be looking at quite a wide fluffy brush, which means that you'd be pulling the eyeshadow down a bit too much. So by doing this very lightly, you've got more control. And because it's a purpley shade, too much, and I can look like I've been punched in the face. So yeah. I think that's enough there. I'm just going to, again, just blend a little bit out. Now using the detail shader brush, the 237, I'm going to go back in with that hot pink, the 21, which is there, and I'm just going to go in middle underneath my eye. And just do a bit of a line, tiny bit above my eyelashes. And then I've got a clean, it's a petite crease brush, but it's a little bit of a point there. I'm just blending that all together. But not so hard that it's just all one big smudge. Not a smudge, but you can't tell a difference, if you know what I mean. So you can, I still want to be able to see the colours. There, I think that's all right. So I'm going to go back with the Urban Decay and using that very pale colour again. I'm just going to slightly highlight underneath my brows and soften again. So I've blended up and now I'm blending down. Don't want to go too low because I still want to have a lot of colour on my lid. Now this is a time when I can see if my eyebrows need touching up. So I can see that they do a little bit here. Just strengthening up the outer corner. No, I think that I think that eye look is quite nice actually. It's not the best. I'm not that keen on the palette in all honesty. I've only done two looks with it, so I can't give you a hundred percent opinion. I know so many people love it and everyone is different. Obviously everyone is completely different from what you like and what you don't like and stuff. I just think that there's just easier palettes out there that can blend a bit easier. I need to get some eyelash curlers because my one are broken <sighs> and it annoys me. So I'm using Too Faced Better Than Sex and it's the mini version. So I'm not going to do any lines. I think my makeup is quite dramatic. Lines, I mean eyeliner, <laughs> liquid eyeliner. No lines, no lines today, but I am going to be wearing fake eyelashes. Still don't know what to do with my hair. Oh, I don't know. Do you know what I'd like to do one day, which would be quite fun actually, because I've seen a few on YouTube recently and it's like, get you lot to decide what I should do with myself. <laughs> Not literally, but I mean, what um, what I should do. Basically, YouTubers are on Instagram and they ask their followers on Instagram to choose between uh, certain things like, shall I have my hair curly or shall I have it straight? Shall I have it up? Shall I have it down? And whatever your followers say, you do it. So I've watched a few recently and it looks quite fun. And I know I haven't got loads and loads of followers, but I've got nearly a thousand. I think I'm about 40 odd away from a thousand followers on Instagram. But uh, I was just thinking that might be quite cool. So even if there's only like, like five of you that actually do the poll, I still am gonna get a result, aren't I? So get to choose what clothes I should wear, what color makeup I should wear, just for a day. 
So yeah, so I don't know. Do you think I'm, I'm a bit silly to do it because I've only got a small amount of followers on Instagram or do you think it would be a laugh and you would like to be involved? Let me know. <laughs> so, there, so it looks a little bit better, doesn't it? Sort of more finished. So while my eyelashes are drying, I'm going to do the rest of my face makeup. Right then, so I'm using L'Oreal. It's my favourite bronzer ever. <laughs> L'Oreal Back to Bronze. I did a video of this a couple of months ago, maybe. L'Oreal brought out a new set of um, makeup. No makeup makeup. That was the tagline. And oh my god, it's gorgeous. I got the blush. I won't be using the blush today because that's more like a copper colour. But... Um, Oh, this is so lovely, so lovely. If you've got really pale skin, it will suit you. If you've got darker skin, it will suit you as well, but very subtle. So if you like a really strong bronze, then maybe this isn't the one for you, but it is buildable, it is buildable. So I, as you can see, I'm just using a big fluffy brush, very lightly. I'm not going in like that. I'm using sort of that sort of shape around there and just sort of carving out a little bit. I'm not doing a contour, nah, can't be bothered tonight. <laughs> and then bringing it up here onto my foreline. Foreline, it's not a foreline. What is it? Hairline, forehead hairline. <laughs> I know what I mean. So it's like a traditional three. Yeah, so it's that coming down here, especially there. Oh, carve out that uh, <laughs> jaw. <laughs> and then try and blend down here then. No, I'm just going by the viewfinder. <laughs> I just realised I should be looking at mirror while I'm doing this. But oh, hopefully I'll be alright. <laughs> a little bit on my chin, a little bit on my nose. It's just where the sun would naturally catch your face. Oh, by the way, the brushes I'm using are Real Techniques. I'm using another Real Techniques for my blusher. And the blusher I'm using is a Karl Lagerfeld. I love this. It's more of a pinky toned, but it's also got a bit of a highlight in it as well. So there, yeah, really nice. I do need a mirror for this. It very, it's like feather touches, feather touches on my apples. I don't want to go too low because it's got a bit of a highlight in it. So concentrating on my apples with my cheeks, but more up high. Because you can see there, can you see, ooh, can you see the highlight? And it's not even that strong a highlight, not really, but it is, it's picking up really well. Oh, I like it. Bit of highlight there, again, where the sun naturally catches you. <laughs> Down a bit there. Tiny bit on my nose there, because I don't want a pink nose. See, I'm looking at the viewfinder again, I should be looking here or else I could be a glowing mess. Top it off even further and going in with the other part, the L'Oreal set. And look what's happened, I'm gutted. <laughs> look, I mix those two together, see? To highlight and something happened, I can't remember. I was on my way, it was in Italy. I don't know what happened and it just opened it up and it was broke. So I'm gonna have to get another one. So I'm not going full on where I've just been, just on certain little areas, just to pick up that highlight a little bit more. And then if you want to do it, which I sometimes do, and it just softens it and it, you know, it's just nicer. Using a clean fluffy brush, or this brush actually was the one I used to apply the translucent powder to my eyes. So very, very lightly sort of blending that in a bit. So, no, I think that's fine, isn't it? It's quite a nice glowy sort of pink look. Onto my lashes now. Start in the middle, and then I find the edge, stick that down, find the other edge, and stick that down, and push it as close to the lash line as possible. If I was wearing liquid eyeliner, then it's not such a big deal because you can sort of blend it all together but because I'm not I want it to look as real as possible so I have to do it so that it, it's right on my lash line right while that one's drying going in with Eye, Eye Heart Revolution it's an 
uh, one of these stylo type pens. It's an eyeliner. I'm just going to go on my waterline at the top. Right, same again, pencil here. And then using the eyeliner again, just coming underneath a little bit in the corners. And using my finger to blend. So to set all this makeup, using a e.l.f. Dewy Mist Setting Spray. I love it, it's coconut. So there you go. So that is all my makeup using the Sofa X palette. So my final thoughts are, yeah, the colours are quite nice. They are quite nice shades in there. The palette initially, it's like, wow, it's stunning, but they're not the best. It is definitely not the best. I ha I don't own the other Soph palette, so I can't compare those two. The only good Revolution palette I've got is the Flawless 4 palette, and it's no comparison. That is just a lot better, the formula. It just to know what it is it's just more creamier easier to blend than these i haven't used all the colors so i will be doing lots more looks for them and if there's a particular look that you would like me to do with these colors then please let me know down below but yeah it's okay it's not the worst but it's okay and it costs 10 pounds so you know i haven't paid like 30 40 odd pound or else i'd be gutted <laughs> But it's all right, it is all right, and I am going to try more of it. So yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this sort of get ready with me makeup look using the new Self Extra Spice Palette by Makeup Revolution. <laughs> I'm going to go off now, do something with my hair, and go off to the wedding party. So I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>